Hello creators, welcome back. My name is Bucky Dirtle and I'm doing a video tutorial on Blender and we are today talking about our defaults. Our defaults so that when you get in Blender, it's exactly where you want it to be. So you can start working immediately without having to make any changes and adjustments and settings. It will be exactly what you want it to be. Okay, let's get started. The first thing is we are now in the default. This is the default layout. This is where you would be right out of the box. Now, if you don't see this, is if this is not where you are, here's what you want to do. You want to go File and go Load Factory Settings. That will load exactly as it is out of the box. So let's hit that, Load Factory Settings. Okay, there you go. Now, there's no settings set. Everything now is as it is from the factory. So now, let's get started by going to the Video Editing area, your Video Editing layout now that's right here it's under if you're you're up in our information um, strip across the top it's down at the bottom video editing and that will take us into this this is our video editing uh, layout okay so now uh, let's just go over quickly what we see here first thing is we have a display window here this display window will show our video as we edit as we'll show it and down here we have our strips editor right here this is our tracks where we laid in. This is our sequencer is what it's called. But it's these are all of our tracks, our audio and video tracks, our audio and video strips, they call it. So, but this is our sequencer uh, window. Down at the bottom, we have our timeline right here. Down the timeline. And at the very bottom in the timeline window, we also have these settings down here that we're going to be talking about a little bit as well. I have our transport and things. And right here we have our um, our graph editor. It was right here graph editor. Now we're not going to be using this one right now so we're actually going to replace the graph editor with our preferences window. And again let me show you how I got that. And this is a little bit cryptic. Let me go back to this. You'll notice I'm pulling down from the top. Go back to my graph editor. Now I'm at the bottom. Okay this is something I don't understand why Blender has done this but the when you're in graph editor window the menu is at the bottom. You see that's a pull up. Um, so when you go to properties it's actually at the top. Now it's a pull down. Ugh, I don't know why they do that. Anyway, if you're a developer for Blender, uh, maybe you'll be able to answer that for us. So we want to be in our preferences window, and that's where we are. And again, it's right here. Properties. I say preferences. I'm in properties. This is our properties window. Okay, properties window. Now, the very first thing I want to bring to your attention is, uh, let's start at the top. Um, we have our display and this guy right here. This is a render window, little render um, uh, window right here. You see this? So we we can click render for different options here. But when we are rendering, what are we displaying? It says image editor is the very first. That's the that's what it's showing us. That's the default. But we don't want that. We want to go to keep UI. Keep UI is going to give us better performance on our computer, and it's going to allow us to continue working while in the background Blender is rendering. So we want to keep that guy. Okay, so there you go. Um, now let's have a look at dimensions, which is our next window right here. I'll keep render open. Dimensions. Now the very first is a pull down, and you can see we have a number of different options here. You know, for doing doing different things. We have PAL. NTSC, and, you know, but what I use for me is uh, HDTV 1080p. That's what I use 99.9% of the times for me for my work. So HDTV 1080p, that's what I like to use. And you'll see below that is our resolution. Now you can manually set this. If you have a different resolution you want to use that's not up here in the presets, you can change your resolution here. Perhaps 1920 by 1000, 1920 by 10, I don't know. Whatever it is you're using, you can change it here. And this will give you your output difference. This will this is what what you're going your project's going to be outputted as when you render it. So your final video, that's what's going to be. And you can change your resolution here as you're working, but that's something we'll talk about in another video. Well, let's leave it on 100 for now. If you do find you're getting some some problems with uh, your performance in computer, lower it down to 50. Do whatever you need to do with that. Now, we have frame range here. Now, frame range has two locations. You can have it here, you see it. And at the bottom of the screen, we also have it down here at the bottom. I use it down here more so, but we can use it up here too. The frame range is how many frames your project is going to be. By default, it starts at 1 and ends at 250 frames. So you can see that down here in our, in our uh, sequencer. 
goes from 1 to 250. And you can see it down the timeline. 1 will be over here. And over on the far right, we have 250 over here. Okay? But we might not want that. Maybe your video is an hour long. I mean, who knows? Maybe your video is 10 seconds long. You're, you're going to maybe want to change that. So maybe you'll change it to 600. Um, and there you go. Now it's changed to 600. And if I go down the bottom down here, I go view... view all and then you go see our full thing is 600 now you see so because i did view all so now it's going to show the whole thing but it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here today but you will be changing this a lot and i'll be telling you why in future videos but now you know how to change it i'll tell you why in a future video okay next thing frame rate frame rate right now by default is set to 24 frames per second now that's okay maybe you want to use 24 frames a second no problem the caution I'm going to give you is that if you, the footage that you have that you've been shooting with your camera, you're inputting and you want to use in here in Blender, if it's not 24 frames per second, then it's not going to work right. If it's faster you, it'll or slower frames per second, it will get out of whack. It'll get out of sync. So what you need to do is you need to check what your frame rate is in your footage before you import it. And the way you can do that is you can do it with VLC, you can do it with uh, some other applications, um, Media Info, you can do it with FFmpeg. Um, there's all kinds of different applications that will let you see what your frame rates are. And if your frame rate is not correct, then you can use one of those pieces of software to re-encode it at the proper frame rate. So if it turns out it's say at I don't know 29 or maybe 30 frames per second, and you want to be you want your project at 24. Well then, before you import your footage, change your footage to 24 frames per second, okay? Or, if you have all your footage is at 30 frames per second, we'll make your project 30 frames per second. And then it'll, it'll, be, it'll sync up fine. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll get into more about how to do that in another tutorial, but right now I want to move on to the next one. So right now, let's scroll down a little further. With some of these I'm skipping over because we don't need to change them. So let's scroll down to our output right here. Now, output, and it got temp. Now, depending on what what um, system you're on, Linux, Windows, Mac, this will be some different version of temp. But you might you might not want it to, to be temp. Now, you're saying, Bucky, what are you talking about? Well, temp, this output, this is the folder where, where Blender will save all of your rendered files. So if you go to render off a video, it's going to stick it in the temp folder. If you render off a little piece of video as you're editing, it's going to stick in the temp folder. Everything goes into the folder you specify right here. So you might not want temp. You may want something else. So let's just see how we change that. So over here, you see this little folder button. You click that guy. I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to say click the folder called Blender Render. Uh, I'll go back. Just, I think you might have missed that. See, so i got a folder here called Blender Render. So I'll click that Blender Render, and I'll click Accept. And there you go. Now, if I scroll down again... Here you go. Now my output folder is Blender Render. You can put it on whatever you want, but at least now you know where the rendered files are going to go. And when we save uh, these preferences, they'll go there all the time. And by the way, that's a good segue. We should actually do that right now. Go File, Start, Save Startup File. Click that guy and say, yes, I want to save it. Now what that's done now is it's told Blender where we are now, all the setting changes we've made, keep those okay keep those now that's that's what we want so we can do that from time to time every time you make a change and you want to keep you can set that again and it will overwrite it okay let's keep going now the next thing is we need to change this <clears throat> we need to change this is the type of file format that will be outputted as we do our uh, renders now I'm going to choose under movie I'm going to choose uh, FFmpeg video right there that's what I want. Now, you may have a different thing. You may want AVI, RAW, AVI. I don't know. It's up to you. And if you may be on a different platform, which will give you different um, outputting, outputting options, choose what works for you. I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. That works for me in here. And then I can choose black and white, or I can choose RGB. 99.9% .9 of the stuff I do is in color, so I'm going to choose RGB. There you go. So that's that. That's done. Now, encoding... The next window down, you have some presets. I'm going to choose for me H.264 in MPEG-4. 
Okay, that's the preset that I want. Now you may have different, oops, sorry, you may have presets. You may want something else here. It's up to you. You can explore. this. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I don't have time to tell you all about these things, but I will in another video if you'd like. Uh, but I'm going to choose H.264 in MPEG-4, and that is going to give me the settings that I want. Now you can, again, you can change this. You can change the, the coder, uh, the codec, and you can change the container. Okay, but I'm choosing container as MPEG-4, and my codec is H.264. That's what I want, and that was the preset that I chose. Quality right now is at medium. If I'm if I'm editing and I just want to see something quick, I might want to go low quality so I can see it quick. And uh, but if I'm doing color grading and if I'm doing a final version, maybe you want to go lossless. Maybe you want to go high quality. Again, that's up to you and when and when and what you are actually exporting and rendering out. Okay, let's keep going. Down a little further to our audio. Now, right now, if I was to render right now, I'd have no audio because it's set to none, so no sound. You got to choose. I'm going to choose AAC. That's what I'm going to use. You may want MP3. Uh, sorry, uh, MP3. You may want something else. Maybe want FLAC. I don't know. It's up to you and what you're doing. I'm going to choose AAC. That's for me. It works for me. And my bit rate, I'm going to leave it at 192. You can up that if you want better quality. Depending again what you're doing, you may want to change it. Okay, there you go. Now, that is all of the, the things under our um, uh, properties. Um, our properties window. Okay, that's all the changes we want to make in here for now. I'm going to go file, save startup file, because I want to make sure I, I save this. So if anything happens, I don't lose all those nice little settings I've got done now. Because every time we come back, it'll all that will be there for me. Next thing. Let's go down, all the way down to the bottom to playback. Now, I should show you this. I'm going to import a small piece of video. Before I, before I actually show you this, I'm going to import a piece of video. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to bring in um, a little piece of video of me playing the fiddle. There we go. Um, now, this, uh, right now, the, if I pull my mouse across back and forth, uh, I'm seeing the video change, but I'm not hearing anything. I, I do a lot of editing to sound, so I like to be able to hear things as I'm playing them back. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go down to playback, and I'm going to enable audio scrubbing. And now, you, you won't be able to hear this, but as I go back and forth, I can hear the sound as I'm scrubbing back and forth. Okay? Now, I'm going to go back again. I'm also going to choose Frame Dropping. I'm going to select, and I'm also going to select AV Sync. Now, what those two will do is they will help um, keep my playback in my display up in the top right uh, nice and clear and clean as I am playing things back. It won't be dropping... It'll drop frames if it needs to, but it will keep everything moving along at a good pace. It won't be slowing down and everything. So this lets me have nice, more realistic playback as I'm uh, editing my videos. Okay? So there you go. That's that. Now, I also want to show you another thing. Um, I'd like to show you uh, waveform drawings. I do like to have that on. And what that does is it will actually, in the video, you see, look, it gives me my waveforms. So, again, I edit the video a lot. Uh, sorry, I edit the sound a lot. So I like to see when things are actually happening in the video, uh, depending on what the sound is being, what's being said or played. So I really like that. Um, so that's something you may want to have on as well. So, again, you go view, and you go to waveform drawings, and you choose on. Okay. So there you go. That's that one. Now, once again, I'm going to go save again. I'm going to, just in case. I'm going to go save startup file again. And that's going to save our startup file, so we'd have that there. Now I, I need to delete these things again. I'm going to do that because otherwise, every time I start, this will be here. I don't want that. But I'll delete that in a second. Now the next thing I want to show you is um, let me just demonstrate, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing. First of all, I'm going to um, box select both of these tracks. So I want to actually have both of these tracks selected. Let me deselect first. I'm going to box select both of these tracks. Okay, so now I've selected them. And now I'm going to hit K. I want to cut these. So I, I've made a cut, a soft cut right here. Now I'm going to box select these two. And by the way, I box select by, by clicking B. And uh, I'm going to grab these two uh, tracks. And I'm going to move them up. Oops, I made a mistake. I'm going to box select those again. I'm going to click G for grab. And I'm... Oop, I box selected everything. Sorry about that. I box selected everything. 
Uh, let's try again. Let's go box select and select that. There you go. And I'm going to hit my G for grab. And I'm going to move these guys up out of the way and drop them. Now, right now, actually, you know what? I'm going to delete these two. I'm going to get rid of these, these two guys here. Now they're gone. So, you know, we did have footage right here. We don't have it anymore. We can't see how much footage we had. So, for example, if I wanted to be able to take this file and pull it out, I don't know how much room I can pull it out before I run out of uh, footage. Okay? So, let's. what we need to do is we need to go View, and we need to say Show Offsets. Now, I don't know why, but Blender has that off by default. And I, I don't know why. Actually, Blender has this. Um, Premiere Pro doesn't have this option at all, and I wish it did. So, you see now, this is the footage that's actually, the data is here. It's not showing it. It's not showing in the footage, because you can see in the display, it's blank. And the display doesn't happen until we actually get into the video. So, when I'm over here, there is data there, but it's, there's nothing, it's not displaying it. So, if I did want to take this um, and move it over... I know that I have I have how much footage I have left that I can actually play with. Very, very useful. Very, very useful. So for that reason, we want to have show offsets selected. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in this window, and I'm going to delete it. So now we have nothing in the window here at all. Uh, no data. So I'm now going to go File, Save Startup File, Yes. Now, now I've got my startup file saved. I've got everything done. Everything is ready to go. Um, we have um, of our, all of our settings set. Actually, I'll give you one other option setting that, I'll, that we can do as well. And one last thing. I'm going to go to User Preferences, File User Preferences. And this is under System. We can set this to, this is not really part of our default layout, but this may be useful for you. Right here, under Sequencer Clip Editor, I went, again, let me go back. I went to System, in the System tab right here, down to our cache limit. I'm on, on my computer has 16 gigs, so I'm going to give it, I don't know, like, I don't say 12 gigs for cache. So there you go. It makes more memory available to Blender. I'll hit Save User Settings. Now, now I have 12 gigs available to Blender. If you have um, a machine that has 12, uh, it's 8 gigs, Maybe you want to use four or five. You can try and see what works for you. But that's just another little setting you can set. Um, and once again, I'll go File, and I'll go down to Save Startup File. And yes, now all that's saved as well. So now everything is ready to go. Whenever you start Blender from now on, this is where you'll be. All the settings will be done. You're ready to roll. You're ready to start editing video. Okay? So, and I'm, I'm I apologize that... Blender is so cryptic, you know, but that's why I'm doing these tutorials to help you so you understand, you see how this actually works. So there you go. Now, if you have any questions about what you saw today, be sure to, to connect with me on the utopian.io Discord, or you can leave a message in the, um, in the, the comments for this video, this uh, tutorial, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.